Welcome back to the channel everybody, this is Codations. In today's video, we're going to be jumping back into some Cookie Run Kingdom and we're going to be taking a look at the best treasures to use for different types of content. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Diving right in, ladies and gentlemen. So for this video, we're going to be talking about the best treasures to use for the type of content you were trying to run. So as you can see here behind me, we've got the PVE, we've got PVP, and then we've also got the Guild Boss Battle. So just keep in mind, there's going to be a couple additional contents here that's going to be coming out in the game. And basically, the Tropical Raids are going to be one of those. Those do classify underneath PVE, so keep that in mind. And then also in the Chaos Tower, they're going to be a mix of different types of content. That's going to be some PVP matches some pve matches so you just got to basically gauge which match you're going up against and then just adjust your treasures accordingly all right so first one we've got here for pve obviously is going to be that old pilgrim scroll the old pilgrim scroll if you don't know is probably arguably the best treasure in the game and it's going to provide an attack percent buff for your entire team which is absolutely huge right additional attack is just going to be better in general and like i said it's huge especially when you get to start leveling it up mine currently i believe is at level eight out of 12 being max and the level eight is already at 50 percent attack increase so it's absolutely huge and makes a lot different when it makes a massive difference when it comes to going up against specific stages where you got to do enough damage Next one up we've got is going to be the Jelly Watch. Now, the Jelly Watch is going to be directly reducing the cooldown percentage of all of your cookies on your team comp that you're utilizing the watch with. Again, a very, very good treasure here. One of those treasures where if you are lacking some of those cooldown substats on your toppings for your cookies, this watch can definitely still help you achieve whatever cooldown you are looking for, you know, to line up with your entire team comp on auto. Next up here we've got, and that's going to be the overall slingshot. Now, this one's going to be very subjective according to the type of content Content that you are covering in the PVE aspect, um, but real, where a lot of players are utilizing this are going to be specific boss stages because they might be lacking the amount of damage that is required in order to beat the timer in the center of your screen. And that's going to be where the slingshot comes into play because it provides a defense break on the enemy, which then allows the enemy to take more damage from your cookies, basic attacks, and skills in general. So definitely don't sleep on the slingshot, but I don't think it would be one that I would utilize all the time. Um, it's going to be really really specific to whatever you're going up against next one up that's probably a really good one arguably one of the best treasures to use for pve and that's going to bring us the to the gatekeeper's horn this one is going to be providing a defense buff for your entire team every one of your cookies so again very very good one here nothing too crazy to talk about when it comes to this treasure just know that if you need to add some survivability to your team the the horn is definitely a good option and it's crazy that it's a common one um but nevertheless the next one up we've got here for the pve and the the last one we've got for PVE content, and that's going to bring us to the Enchanted Robe. So the Enchanted Robe is, again, a very niche treasure, and this one's going to be buffing the attack speed of your two highest attack speed units on your team, which, again, is very niche, but it can definitely be utilized in the overall PVE aspect, depending on what type of content you're covering. The Tropical Raid, if you need to get additional attack speed to do more damage faster. Um, right now, the Sonic Green Hill, the robe is a good option because it does increase your attack speed, so hopefully allow you to kill Eggman faster. Basically, just different types of content. Judge it. I wouldn't utilize this one as my first treasure pick for PVE content, um, but definitely not a bad option. And also, it depends on your team composition um, that you are using if it does also scale somebody like Pastry off of attack speed. So next up, we've got here for PvP that we're going to be diving in, and that's going to be the Old Pilgrim Scroll once again. The additional attack percentage just can't be beat, man. The additional attack percent could be the difference in the arena match between you and another opponent. And not only that, when you start to level up the scroll and you get to those higher tiers in arena, it's going to really come down to the treasures on, you know, your levels on your treasures. And then not only that, the toppings of choice and the substats that each team has, because it can get really, really down and dirty with your comp being a mirror comp and it's just going to be coming off to who's going first and then how much damage they can output so again very very um good one here next one up again is going to be a mirror and that's going to be the jelly watch like i just talked about a second ago having the lower amount of cooldown on your arena team is going to benefit you because sometimes your team composition not only 
dictates if you win or not if you go first, but also because going first will allow you to interrupt whatever they have and then do damage right away. So hopefully, like I said, you can utilize that this watch to give you that just enough percentage that you need so then you do go first in the arena. Next up we've got, and that's going to bring us to the Scythe. And now this one again is very interesting um, because the two things. One, if you do not have an old Pilgrim scroll to give you the attack percent, the Scythe is a very good option as a secondary option because it does still buff your entire team's crit percent and they're going to be doing more crit hits which is going to be doing more damage so in essence it's very similar to the old pilgrim scroll but it's just buffing a different stat and it's still an rng stat because it's only buffing your crit chance not going to be buffing your entire stat like attack is so definitely not the best option but it can be used a lot of scam comps are utilizing the scythe as well so things like your almond comps your ginger brave comps you know things that just really focus in on doing burst amount of damage this is going to be one that they will be favoring next one up we've got is going to be that that ghost keepers horn again to give you that additional defense this one is going to be used kind of like a last resort option in my opinion i don't think team compositions are really building around the horn um but i think they're utilizing it if a they don't have any additional treasures to use or b they're utilizing their exact same comp from you know their pve content just so they can grind out some stuff in the p the p uh, overall arena the horn's not a bad option it's definitely something to use as a fail safe just to allow some survivability to be added to your overall team next up we've got and that was going to be once again the enchanted robe for pvp content in the game the enchanted robe right now there are a ton a absolute ton of attack speed meta comps especially at those higher tiers in arena um the lower tiers don't not necessarily because a lot of the lower tiers like i mentioned they're they're pretty much just running the same team that they have uh, that they have for pve content in the game just to grind out some individual trophies and increase their rank before the season ends but nevertheless on those top tiers you are going to be running into a lot of enchanted robes which is going to be based around attack speed and just keep in mind if you happen to run up against something like that you could easily easily lose to a lower level team just sheerly because they are attacking faster than you, which means they're putting out more damage than you in the same amount of time. So very, very cool. Like I said, it's going to be a niche one depending on the type of team that you are building. And then next up here we've got is going to be that Revive Feather, which absolutely is going to be used in the meta right now. I mean, a lot of people are utilizing this one because it basically just revives a fallen cookie at almost 50% health once you get it leveled up. And then not only that, it's going to be resetting their initial cooldown right away only to three seconds. So it's absolutely broken it could easily be a shift in the arena match utilizing this treasure alone just to give you that additional damage for that revived cookie so absolutely crucial and then last but not least we've got for the overall pvp arena and that's going to bring us to the lollipop the lollipop is going to be specializing more in some of those scam comps, some of those ginger brave comps, those almond comps and things. But basically what it does is it just buffs your cookie on your team that's got the highest attack already. It buffs them additionally with more attack and then more crit percent. So it's absolutely a very niche treasure, but it could easily be something that, like I said, is going to make or break the overall match. Because if they happen to be running a scam comp, hit you with that almond, and then they they pop the, the lollipop, which then is buffing whatever attacker they're going to be utilizing with almond, it could easily shred your entire team within seconds. So it's absolutely one to be mentioned here in the PvP aspect, but it is very niche to the type of content. Alrighty, and then next up we've got here, and that's going to be the guild boss battle. Once again, that scroll is going to be coming back just because overall you cannot argue with that attack percent that it is providing and most guild boss battles are rough, roughly lasting like 40 seconds to like 60 seconds so having as much attack as you possibly can is going to aid you in your overall score not only that the next one up that's going to be coming back once again and that's going to be the jelly watch now these three as you can see here man these are the staple treasures for literally any type of content in the game it's going to be giving you that additional cooldown reduction that you need on your team especially to line up your skills accordingly to make sure you are doing the most amount of damage in the guild boss same thing goes for the next one here that's going to be the slingshot and that's going to conclude the guild boss battle treasures the rest of these treasures unfortunately um are just not going to be in my opinion worth investing in obviously i think leveling them up as you get the additional gold um can definitely benefit and then obviously utilizing things like the monocle one could argue you could use it in the overall arena but it's not going to be the best treasure of choice again keep in mind we're only focusing in here on the best treasures um, for the type of content just to hopefully give you guys especially the new players diving into the game you know a idea of what treasures to invest in and to use and which ones work with pretty much any team composition so like i said guild boss 
boss battle, those three treasures are going to be the best option. Slingshot there is to allow you to do more damage to the boss because that's a defense break on top of stacking with the defense break from Dark Chaco. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's going to be officially concluding the best treasures to use in the overall content for Cookie Run Kingdom. You guys let me know down below in the comment section, as always, what your thoughts are on this overall list. And then not only that, I invite you all to please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you get notification every time we drop a video. We will be going live tonight, but we might not be playing a whole lot of Cookie Run Kingdom. We might be diving a little bit deeper into some Pokemon Unite because it did officially launch on the mobile device. So if you guys want to hang out with me tonight, play some Pokemon, I do play with my viewers via the live stream chat. So definitely jump in there and join us for that. And not only that, don't forget to join the Discord. The link is provided down below in the description. And if you want to check out some additional guides that I have made on Cookie Run Kingdom, check out this playlist right here on the side. And with that being said, as always, I will see you guys on the next one.